gotta say, I am fantastic. La la la. I am fantastic. Everybody, welcome back to the, the live trip. It's not live right now, but it's a trip to Laughlin. And I just saw this beautiful scenario of um, cacti. I guess this is cacti, right? Or what kind of trees are these? Or this isn't cactus. It's some kind of. Is it a cactus? And I just thought I'd share that with everybody while I was telling Jason about the four agreements. Now, y'all want to go out and buy this book, give it as a gift, and give it to your loved ones. And I'm going to go over the four agreements real quick. Number one, be impeccable with your word. Your words matter. The words you say matter. Keeping your word matters. And so by keeping, by being impeccable with your word, it's going to make your life a lot easier in dealing with other people. The second agreement is never let what other people think about you matter. Because they have their own opinions and their own agendas. And it's got nothing to do with you, typically. So you can't let that affect you, especially women. Don't let what everyone thinks about you matter. It's what you think about yourself. So that's this, uh, agreement number two. Agreement number three is never make assumptions. When you make an assumption, you, obviously you're making an ass out of you and me, but it's never a positive assumption. It's a negative assumption. So that's very um, unhealthy to do. And the fourth agreement is always do your best. It's all you can do is your best. And if it's not good enough for someone, take it away. Do something different. Tell them, you know, sorry. I'm sorry my best isn't good enough for you. But uh, is this fantastic, Jason, where we are right now? So I'm writing them down, the four agreements, actually. Yeah. You talk, yes. A, those are good. Of course, it goes into great detail how important those agreements are. But your, your life will be easier and, and dealing with other people will be easier if you keep those agreements, you know. The thing about everyone, especially the home, never let what people think about you. I, I, use, I like to use this example. If I go out in the world today and I meet 100 people and they all told me I was an ugly asshole, I would come back at the end of the day saying, what are the odds that I ran into 100 wrong people? They wouldn't convince me otherwise because they just had their opinion. They, they saw me in a different light. Maybe I was dressed funny to them or whatever. But I know me. And I know I'm not an ugly asshole. Maybe ugly, but you know, I'm not an ass. <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, and assumptions are, are really, really dangerous. So it's a, it's a great book. I give you some great movies to watch. Yeah. Um, and then it's all linked on the website. You know, the, the, um, and the app. The app, Be Fantastic, has fantastic uh, motivational slogans, inspirational quotes, my memes. My favorite meme, of course, is what you want to be, you can be. Be fantastic. That's a good one. Is that a good one? So simple. Yeah. It's, I have a lot of memes about, I think, 45 or 80. I don't remember the number. It doesn't matter the number. They, they work and I love um, ones like Mark Twain he once said the two best days in a person's life are the day they are born and the day they discover why <laughs> that's good that's a good one to do that's good and, I, and then Rene Descartes I think therefore I am a lot of um, people have poo pooed that a very famous person I don't know if he's famous or uh, I should say wealthy person the number one salesman for Tony Robbins said he didn't agree with that and maybe Tony doesn't agree with it either but I agree with it and I'm going with it people didn't agree with Newton and they didn't agree with Freud and not, and not everyone agrees with everybody right yeah. but the point is um, after I, I give this my be fantastic speech to this gentleman I forget his name but he obviously went back to Tony and told him he met Dr. Fantastic and months later I heard that Tony's going around saying if you say the word fantastic you feel fantastic so what do they, they say Imitation is the best form of flattery. That's right. That's right. That's right. So yeah. it is what it is, and, and being fantastic is important. It gives you other people. It makes other people feel good. Makes you look great. Makes you live longer. And I'm I'm sticking to that. Look at this road. We're all by ourselves, sure, Jay. Just is this worth? I hope you'd be out here when you woke up this morning. Well, taking left and right turns. That's to, right. Uh, to Nevada. Now, Jason, uh, you heard earlier, loved my. I think it's one of the first things I said to him. Left and right turns. We all are making left and right turns. We have to believe that the turn we make, which was a decision, is the perfect decision. And I'm having a fantastic day. I really fantastic day. Sure. A fantastic day. I mean, I don't mind driving, but I love meeting new people, doing new experiences. I've never been to Laughlin, I don't think. I think this is my first time to Laughlin. Certainly don't remember this road. 
And if this is the only way to get to Laughlin, boy, not many people are going there. <laughs> right, Jay? No, we, no, it's our own road. It's our own road to Laughlin. Damn. <laughs> Let's turn this puppy around. Can we turn it around? And that's what we still look like. We're still, still here. We're still here. Um, we're still having fun. It's getting sunny. Getting We've been on the road. Sun. How many hours? It doesn't even feel like hours. I mean, no. When you have a good conversation, minutes. it feels like minutes. Jason and I have been on the road for. Uh, great question. Uh, I think four. Four hours? Yeah. We got um, less than an hour to go. Yeah. We're in the middle of nowhere. This is great. Um, I, I don't. I think. Or are they called yucca trees? I think. I'm thinking yucca. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm thinking yucca. Farms. Well, how did I remember that? I don't know. But um, I used to. Um, my sons would play these national tennis tournaments, and we'd go to Arizona. And as a keepsake on the way back from Arizona, whether they won or lost, I'd stop on the side of the road and grab a, a different cacti. Yucca trees. Yucca trees. Yeah. yeah, baby. Yeah. I got a little trivia in my head. So I would pick up a, a, a yeah. cactus and I wrap it in a blanket because they're prickly things. And I bring it. And we had this fabulous cactus garden every year. It was a memento of Arizona. Then I found out, unbeknownst to me, oh, that it's a ten thousand yeah. dollar fine <laughs> if you did. Now I don't. I'm sure. That, hopefully, the police aren't listening to this. Cause hope it's about retroactive. But that was that's a lot of fines. Now, a funny story in Arizona. Um, it's called the I think it's called the flying cactus or something like that, and uh, it's a cactus that will jump off its plant and attach to something hot, like a body. And uh, how I found that out was I was on a golf course and I was uh, Aaron golf ball like some people do. Hypothetically, play golf. Yeah, heard about? I do. Yep. And uh, so I was in the in the in the, the rough. And I went to hit a shot, and I noticed, because I had shorts on, there was a piece of cacti, cacti on my leg. And I go, what the hell? I don't remember bumping into anything, because I didn't bump into anything. It jumped off its plant and attached itself to me. So I said, that's weird. So I took the golf club and kind of like give it a little whack to get it off me. And literally, it jumped back on. It went in a circle and jumped back on me. And I go, what? <laughs> I go, this is bizarre. So I took a real good whack at it and hit it off. And then my uh, cousin who lived in Arizona told me it was a jumping cacti. Pretty right, wild, First that's... time I ever knew. Yeah, that's see, you learned something amazing. new today. Learned a lot of new today. Yeah, and so uh, that was a good experience. But, uh, yeah, $10,000 fine. Do not pick up cactus on the wrong side of the road, everybody. So how are you, you going to bring uh, fantasticness to the wonderful people of Laughlin, Nevada? That's a good question. We're going to go to a restaurant of, tonight, I imagine. Have a lot of audience. Not home. A lot of casinos, a lot of, a lot of people. Well, wherever I bump into, whether it be a guard or a cashier, I'm going to ask them how they are. Yeah. And then they're going to say, I'm good. And I'm going to say, how would you like to be fantastic? And I'm giving my card. And usually that's all I have to do. That's and, not easy. And I'm Dr. Fantastic. And uh, you've just been invited personally to be fantastic. And it's as easy as not saying the word good anymore. Such and a better believing word. you are. Such a better word. Oh, it's not even a word. It's an energy. It's an energy. Because what it does to everybody. And people, you're kind to others when you say you're fantastic or when you tell them to have a fantastic day or oh, when you I tell them that, they look fantastic. I think that cop just turned around to... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's not fantastic. It's not fantastic. That's not fantastic. I just want to keep the, you just keep got the my interest. <laughs> I wasn't going fast anyway. I know. People, slow down. There's no hurry to get through life. It's not the destination you're going to. It's the journey. Journey. So I think we're turning right here. We're taking it right here. Yeah. Yep. There yeah. we go. We're in the country, boys and girls. 95 south for 19 miles. 19 miles to Laughlin. Right. And a uh, little quaint little town. We're still having fun. This is episode three. Probably, if the, and it may go longer because we still have tonight. Three is an important number in life. Three is a very, very important. Look at that beautiful mural of, of stagecoaches, which went through Laughlin, Nevada. I'm sure it has a great history. Probably the gold rush days were probably fresh jerky. You can't go wrong with fresh jerky. Talk about jerky. Well, I guess we're in Searchlight, Nevada, right now, which um, probably has a history. Why don't you Google it? See what it does. The, it does why don't you Google uh, Searchlight? Uh, the, the home of Harry Reid, actually, Senator. What's that? 
Home of Harry Reid. Home of Harry Reid, ladies and gentlemen. Back oh, there's the, the police. Day. We didn't get a ticket. Probably we get a ticket because we're going 38. Have you ever 50. handed out uh, a Be Fantastic card to a policeman? A member of the police force. I get off because I'm Dr. Fantastic. Yeah. I got pulled over recently because an ambulance was going by or a fire engine, I forget which. So I pulled over and I slowed down very slow. And then he went by and I pulled back into traffic. I got pulled over because he said, you have to come to a complete stop. But before he came up to me, I said, how are you? And he said, good. I go, I would like to be fantastic. <laughs> I got out of jail. I said, get out of jail card. And as you know, I got arrested that one time. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, you guys want to see a really funny video uh, on my YouTube channel. It's called Dr. Fantastic Gets Handcuffed and Arrested. And it was a fantastic day. It turned out fantastically. Um, and that was a lot of fun. You have to have fun in life, even if you get arrested. Um, oh, speed trap. Speed trap. Oh. Yeah. So the, the, the new technology you used to have those radar detectors in the old days mm -hmm. that would tell you that was cop back there waiting for people we but just, we're in no hurry we just have don't be a hurry people don't rush to red lights enjoy life stop it. when you see a vista stop and, and take it in and you don't have to take a picture of it take it in a, a, a picture no, of last a lifetime picture. in your mind it's a good picture. it is a good picture Nineteen miles till we reach our, reach our destination. So, what did you find out anything about the searchlight? Uh, other than the Google it real quick. Yeah, let's do that. Let's, let's tell the people we just went through searchlight, and there was one cop. It's a one cop town. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speeding. You get there just a few minutes early, and it really doesn't make much sense. All the dangers and the um, searchlight Nevada. For those on the record here, it's right. Uh, it's not going to come through. It's south, south of Las Vegas, 500 people. 500 people. 539 people. What's it known for? Searchlight. Yeah. I always like to know what the towns are famous for. According, according to former U.S. Senator Harry Reid, who has written extensively about his hometown, the most most likely story is how the town received its name was when George Frederick Colton was looking for gold. The area, May 6th, 1897. He supposedly said it would take a searchlight to find gold ore there. <laughs> Shortly after, it was not much gold. luck, obviously. Leading they to struck the boom gold. area when searchlight had a larger population. When searchlight had a larger population than Las of course. Vegas. Then what? I'm sorry. Searchlight was larger than Las Vegas. Searchlight was larger than Las Vegas. Go back in those days. It was a gold rush days. That's right. Yeah. Well, Vegas was on the map, probably. So that was a gold rush. 1907 down. and 1910, the gold mines produced seven million dollars in gold and other precious minerals. And the town had a population of about 1,500 people. I was just a little kid then. Just a little, little kid. Gosh, I didn't know about searchlight. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. You learned something about searchlight, Nevada. In 1927, the U.S. Route 91 bypassed the town and its population dropped <laughs> to 50. And one police officer. Well, who's still hanging on? The, um, there's a railroad through it because Hoover see, Dam nearby. Hoover Dam. How far are we from oh. the Hoover Dam? Oh, right. the Hoover Dam. Where is that damn thing? It's gonna take a turn for us. Damn. Um, you know, typically the railroad, you know, would make a town. You know, if, if, if you knew the railroad was coming through, you struck a claim and started a town. Because that's the transportation back then. There's gold in them our hills. Well, um, I have a, one of my board members has a gold mine up in Northern California. This one does. Selling stock. You know what? A, um, my definition, because I was in the gold business for a while, my definition of a gold mine, you want to know what it is? It's a hole in the ground with a liar standing on top. Because <laughs> every gold mine person you know has a billion dollar claim and they don't have two nickels to rub together. And they have all the surveys and all the drills and all the things you can imagine and they don't, they're just sitting there. Pipe dream, well, then how is it that uh, he or she who has all the gold makes all the rules? It's the golden yeah. rule. The golden rule, they say. That's what they say. He has the gold, makes the rules. And that's why there's about 13 families in the world today that are controlling all the 1% of the wealth. And by controlling the wealth, they control the governments, the banks, the media, and everybody below that. And if they don't want it in the news, it doesn't get in the news. 
because if you know about aliens or if you know about extinction level events, you may decide not to go to work and go to um, Search Light Nevada and, and, and get off the grid, right? That's not good for them. Because you running your company right now. Except for the record, I was at work today for all those logging in. What's that? Except for the record, I was at work today in the car. We don't want. No, to, no, no, no. I'm no, saying kidding, if you, you, you know what I'm saying. I was from my keyboard. Don't throw me off when I'm on a roll like that. <laughs> um, so you, a lot of people would stop, and say, you know, just go to Hawaii and you know and chill because they know there's bad things going on, but the rich people don't want you to know that because you may not go back to work. And they want you to work your 8 to 5, go home, watch TV, and then repeat the next day. Is that a cop right there? World order. I'm going to say that's a cop right there. Yeah. Highway Patrol? Fantastic. We're, I'm going 82 miles an hour. So we're. I'm going to pull that cop over. <laughs> He's speeding. That's definitely a cop. That's Highway Patrol. We're going 80 now. He's waiting for me to pass him so we can give you a ticket. So we're slowing down. You have a fantastic boat. I am not going to be. A, I, Dr. Fantastic gets all kind of... Uh, freebies because he's a humanitarian. He's trying to do good in the world. And there's a there's called karma. You do good, and I, you know most people don't do good for goodness' sake. They do good if there's a reward. In other words, I'm going to say, oh, what, will you donate to my charity? And typically, the person's going to say, well, what do I get? Oh, you get a ticket to our a raffle, and you get a, a dinner, and you get a vacation, a possible vacation in Hawaii if you donate. So now there's a reward. The real people, the real humanitarians, the real good people, don't need a reward. So they donate anonymously. And that's really humane because they don't need to be patted on the back or, or, or a gift. They're helping out for themselves to make them feel good. And that's what it's all about, making you feel good. And if everyone gets that, and they become fantastic. By the way, a fantastic person, episode three here with Jason... It's one that eliminates the word good in their vocabulary. Jason, by the way, is ambassador number 132. If you didn't hear earlier, I don't think we told about talked about that. Oh, yeah. He's a, the newest ambassador. Got He's got the pin. Oh, is he wearing? He's wearing the pin. There you go. There's my pin. Um, and if you send me a self-addressed stamped envelope, I'll give you <coughs> one for free. Um, within the next 20 minutes. <laughs> but um, what was I saying? Uh, I was on a roll there. Paying it forward. One, uh, one extension is you with the uh, fantastic movement uh, a lot of friends right now are in the process of just paying it forward so we, when you're in line buying a coffee for someone behind you taking care of their bill doing, doing that but if you were to leave that with an invitation from let's say Starbucks and you ask the person at Starbucks to say uh, Dr. Fantastic took care of your dot 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 that could also maybe help the fantastic yeah, movement. yeah. I just think it's a, as an employer which you are now uh, when you uh, have an employee manual, do this, do that, do the other thing, follow this procedure, follow that procedure. Be fantastic. Seems like a good... It's, it's a very good way of making your clients feel good. You know, your sales force, when they go into a meeting and they say, how are you? And they say they're fantastic. They're going to make that person want to buy your product that much more. That's a good thing. Truth. It's, we need to create civility again in our, in our, in our existence. 76, another cop. It's getting hot out here. It's hot, getting hot, hot out hot. here. Hot, hot, hot. And the sun is setting, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a fantastic day with Jason. Started in Malibu, we're in, and we're in, just went through, through Searchlight. A few other, a few other towns on the way, I imagine. <laughs> no time zones. But uh, I hope you had fun today uh, following our conversations and our philosophies and our points of view and uh, she we can't see both at once you know there'd be another little camera to feed in the view would get to see but uh, that you can see it on her face I'm glad I came up with the yucca very proud of myself by the way come up with the yucca uh, I pulled you? that out of my mind I used to steal cacti back in the day <laughs> the cacti and the yucca yeah. and the yucca I don't even see any cacti there's lots of um, what do they call you know those things that um, Tumbleweeds, lots of those out there. I saw on uh, the news recently, um, there was a storm and the tumbleweeds got pushed. It literally buried the, f- the whole front yard up to, the, up, up to the leaves, all the tumbleweeds. <laughs> that was not fun for them. No. That wasn't fantastic. But it's just Mother Nature clearing the uh, clearing the, uh, the brush. Well, and a big thank you for uh, 
making today a fantastic day. I had that's what makes, no makes idea it work well for me. Today was going to be today. I got to tell you, I've been closing. I'll be telling this story to your grandchildren, many people for a very long time. Hopefully, your grandchildren. Uh, I got one of um, you know of the 101 people that actually met someone who's fantastic that I've met through the 5,000 people since doing this was an old lady, and she was 80. I want to say 82, 86. She got in the car and he said, how are you? She said, I'm good. I give her. And I gave her the speech. And then I asked her, which I asked you earlier, have you ever met anyone in your life that says they're fantastic? And her eyes lit up. She goes, my late, my second late husband, Gianluca Jones, said he was fantastic every time he was asked. He was one of, so for <coughs> those still watching with us, of the 5,000 people you've asked that question to, asked that question to how many have she, said they know someone? Who, 100. She was, I don't remember the number where she is, but as of today, it's 101. 101 of 5,000 people. That's 2%. That they know. That met someone in their life. Met someone. In their life that says they're fantastic. So I said to her, well. Such a small percentage. Because she said she was, her eyes, her face lit up on the memories of her late husband. And I saw it in her face. And I said to her, well, when you got in the car, you said you were good. And I said, well, knowing, and I could see in your face how good it made you feel. Or how fantastic it made you feel for him to say that to you why don't you say it to others and she says you know what I never thought of it like that about giving but she says I'm going to be fantastic the rest of my life that made my day that's a big day and when people give me a big compliment saying it was the best ride they had or whatever the compliments they give me I don't do it for that but it makes me know that I'm on the right path that I'm getting through to people to convince them that there's a better way there's a fin- more fantastic way of looking at life, and that's to be fantastic, and to be kind to others, and considerate, and friendly, and polite, and, and civil, and those are all the things that fantastic people are. They let you into traffic. They open doors for people. They say please and thank you. They say hello back. That's fantastic people. We need more of them. It's infectious. And you never, that's why I'm on my card. It says, live longer, be happier, and never be forgotten. No one ever, you will never forget me as long as you live, <laughs> whether true. that's good or bad, you know. No, no. But you don't forget anyone, even if it's at an airport, in passing, true. someone in line say, how you doing? They say, I'm fantastic. You just never forget that person. And this is why, like, I only say that because of the 101 people that I've met that never forgot that person. And some of them, by the uh-huh. way, two people got in the car, two people out of the thousands that have gotten in this car, that's nice messed up. And I said, how are you? You know what their response was? Two people. They said, I am fan fucking tastic. I said sober? That that's a gold medal. That's that's the best you can do. It's the best opening line on the planet because it tells that person that you're confident and you're funny. And I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna do it I've been asked to do this and I may do it tomorrow. I'm gonna reveal my secrets to meeting a person. I don't wanna say picking up chicks, because that's not cool nowadays. Meeting a girl or a guy. Um, and having a relationship with them, let's say. I'm not sure how to put it. Um, and I'm going to reveal that tomorrow in a video. Because I have the secrets. Log in, everybody. We're going to do a mile and take a left here. On mile or left? 63. Um, so I'm going to reveal how to... I've already revealed the best uh, guacamole um, recipe on the planet in one of my episodes. And I get paid to make guacamole for people because it's so good. And it's a secret recipe. Um, and I revealed that on my thing. So now I'm going to reveal how to make the, a best impression with a girl or boy. I'm not sure how to title that one. But I don't want to say how to pick up chicks. Although that would get a lot of exposure. <laughs> but Because I guess you don't... In my day, when, when, as a bachelor, we'd say to the guys, let's go pick up some chicks. That was the old line back then. I don't think they say that. Do they say that nowadays? Do they? Let's go pick up some chicks. I, uh... That's what the line was back Turn then. Left like, okay. And back then, you could say to a girl, I think you look gorgeous. I'd love to you know, be with you. Yeah. But now it's like sexual harassment. Let's pull over that cop. I think he made a legal turn. This would certainly get the ratings up on the show. Exactly. Continue on Nevada 163 East for 18 miles. Uh, another 18 to go. Okay, it's okay. We're getting there. At the end, another 19 minutes uh, on episode three. It just can't get any better. Everybody looks like the light's bad. Have a fantastic evening. Stay tuned for maybe episode four, five, and six. It'd be fantastic, everybody. Everybody, we're back. This is still part of episode three because 
just want to share this beautiful sunset. Well, the sunset's behind us, but the, the view, the vista of, uh, of this is just, to me, it's magnificent, if not fantastic. Symbolic. Symbolic. It's just gorgeous. And we're, we're still behind the cop, so it's always better to follow a cop than be followed by one. You hate a cop when they're following you. You can yeah. be innocent as mother, yeah. and still it feels uncomfortable. Adrenaline releases. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you another story real quick. I get, um, this is, oh, a long time ago, but I'm driving the, um, my daughter's, my, my wife's daughter and her boyfriend to Mammoth. And we're driving on a highway like this, and I get pulled over. And we were smoking some pot and drinking some beer. So we had an open container. And so I passed him my beer to her and she, she was sitting in the middle and she passed it to her boyfriend and I get pulled over and he didn't know what to do with it so he passed it back to her and she didn't know what to do with it so he, she passed it back to me and I'm saying a lot of good you guys are so I put it on the floorboard there and the joint was sitting on the dashboard yeah. it, was, it was just a, a roach right yeah. and uh, so the cop pulls up and I have cowboy boots on it don't matter in a second with the story and uh, he uh, he obviously sees the roach. He asked me to get out of the car. As I get out of the car, I knock the beer over. He grabs the beer and puts it on, now on top of the car. So then he says, i got to give you a sobriety test. So he gives me the sobriety test. But I wanted to, uh, I said to him first, I said, I want to let you know that I'm wearing boots. There's a, an incline here. It's on a freeway, and um, and it's windy. <laughs> I had to give him a little clarification, yeah. right? Yeah. So um, Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Yeah, I mean. Fun. And so then he, he was very mad at me for, you know, all this. But I, I, when I got out of the car, no, actually, I reached back, I got to back up. I reached back and back me to grab my, my driver's license, right? Yeah. And as I was reaching by, uh, I turned my head. He reached in and grabbed the roach. So when I reached back to give him my driver's license, he's cupping the roach in his hand. Then I get out and knock over the beer, right? I don't know why this guy's going so slow. Well, we're going 73. He wants to see who we are. Maybe I'm not going so slow. <laughs> we're going 70 miles an hour. So anyway, so he's, I see the roach in his hand, and then I get out, and then he grabs the beer and puts it on top, gives me the sobriety test, and now he's really mad at me, and, he's, and he, he actually said these words. He said, if I knew... Oh, I got a really story even better than this one for you. If I knew you were under the influence of either one of these things, I'd bring you to jail right now. And I'm scratching my head, I'm thinking, I feel like I slapped him. Say, what are you, an idiot? The beer is half drunk and the, and the roach is smoked. He's like, what are you, nuts? And he let me go without a ticket. What was the... My, why, did he, why did he change his mind? What was the... Uh, I don't know. He was just a nice guy, I guess, or something. I, I wasn't drunk and I wasn't uh, stoned, I guess, according to him. Uh, I'm a good talker. But here's even a better story. This is the, one of the best stories of being pulled over by a cop that I've ever... Uh, that, probably can remember right now and I guarantee you the cop is still telling the story to this day 40 years later the guy and my, my me and my buddy got drunk at a restaurant and um, when we came out of it we didn't have our driver's license on us and we were drunk and he got him I got on my motorcycle and he wanted to drive so I said okay you can drive and we're speeding we get pulled over and um, we didn't have rich I didn't have the registration on my motorcycle we we're drunk and I didn't have my driver's license all right so I said, well, as we're, uh, he's being interrogated because he was driving. I said to the other cop, I goes, can I go take a pee? And he said, I can't tell you you can do that. So I took that for a yes, went off, took a pee, came back. And then I said to the cop, you know what? I'm sorry that I don't have registration. And because I'm a bachelor, I'm traveling around a lot. So he took it as a brag that I, was, I guess because I said I was a bachelor and I, I'm not keeping track of stuff, whatever. These are his exact words. <laughs> he said to me, and my friend's listening probably the other cop as well, he said to me, oh yeah, I don't have any fun, I'm married, real sarcastically like, right? Yeah. And my exact words back to him, he won't believe this, but it's God's truth, I said to him, what do you mean you don't have any fun? Your wife's a lot of fun. Went right at it. How'd that turn out? We got off without anything. It was the best line <laughs> I could have ever done in that situation. <laughs> it was the best line he probably ever heard in his life in that situation. That's it was audacious. Nice. It was yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. It was stupid. It, but it was funny as fuck, I guess. It was fan fucking. It was fan fucking fantastic. <laughs> and um, we laughed when we got on that. But he first of all, John Marie about shit his pants yeah. when he heard that. 
And um, when we got on that motorcycle and they cut us loose without a ticket, we laughed for, for 45. You know when you laugh so hard, yeah. your, your jaws hurt? It was the funniest thing in the world. Uh, and I got even better. I mean, I got so many stories about getting, getting cut loose from the police. But it has to do with a lot of drugs and alcohol. But at any rate, that was a really funny one. So now, now, in those days, they did that. This is, you know, the 80s, right? Then what happened was some nice cop let someone off that was drunk. Let him go home. He said, drive safely. That person got in an accident and then sued the cop and the police department for not arresting them. That ruined it for everybody else. Then they realized they can't be nice to anybody because being nice doesn't always... You know what they say, good guys finish last? Um, and that's uh, one person or a couple of people ruined it for everybody. Because it's nice for a cop to have some pity and be nice and maybe do the right thing, right? But that, that didn't work out. <laughs> Nowadays, you got a little bit of a buzz, you're going to jail. Yeah. And it's very expensive. So people don't drink and drive. Don't uh, smoke and drive. Because that's still DUI. Driving under the influence. And if you gotta go to Lafton, Laughlin, call Doctor Fantastic. Call Doctor Fantastic. He'll get you there safe. And you only drink one. What was that? Energy drink. One energy drink. <laughs> Brought to you by. I, I'm on the natural high. I don't need uh, alcohol. Or, although I do like drinking. We're gonna have some drinks tonight. You're a drinking man, right? I, I've been on. We're gonna uh, put a few a couple away. Yeah. Everybody. Um, the, the, yeah, stay tuned. The journey continues. Remember, in life, it's not the destination, it's the journey. Be fantastic, everybody. Everybody, I'm going to guess that ahead of us is Laughlin, Nevada, because I see some casinos. I see the same cop. We're not going to pass him. It should be against the law to pass a cop. <laughs> That's Laughlin, Nevada, everybody. We made it safe and sound. Unless this cop gives me um, yeah, a tail tailgating ticket. Sure. Everybody, we're at Don Laughlin's Riverside Hotel Casino. Don't leave Laughlin without visiting it. <laughs> and right next is the Aquarius. What a pretty sign. And it's the rush hour traffic. Two-lane highway because they're remodeling the city. And there's every building is a casino. <laughs> Gee, you think they do a little gambling there? Do you know that in, um, I'm trying to think, in, there's an Asian city, if I can think of it real quick, that in that one casino in Asia outperforms all the other casinos in America. One casino over there in Asia. I'm trying to think of it, it's Thailand or whatever. I forget. Hey everybody, we're in the casino. We just checked in, we got our rooms. All the lovely people are playing their video games. Jason is robbing the uh, the ATM machine for its all its cash. We have our rooms, uh, we separate rooms. Lucky for Jason because I snore like a train, I'm told. And uh, we're in uh, we're in Laughlin, everybody. Overpopulated cities around the world have caused people to become a greedy, selfish, and litigious society. Would you like to be happier, live longer, never be forgotten, and help make the world a kinder, more civil place? It's actually easier than you think. Every day you're asked, how are you? Instead of saying good, say I am fantastic. It will make you look better, feel great, and reduce your stress. Making the world a better place starts with each person. Please join the Be Fantastic movement today. What you want to be, you can be. Be fantastic.